Hello everyone, welcome back to the Anatomy Lab. Today we are going to be taking a look at blood vessels of the head, the neck, as well as the thorax. So to get started, as you can see, there are all of these little red and blue tubes. Now, although this isn't a hard rule, for the most part, arteries are going to be the red ones, veins are going to be the blue ones, but the strict rule that you usually follow is that arteries are going to be traveling away from the heart. So they usually start out very large, like the aorta, and then they branch out to smaller and smaller and smaller blood vessels. So you usually look to see where the arteries branch to look for different named blood vessels. But you also have the veins, which start out small, and then they join together to form bigger and bigger and bigger veins which is going to be leading back to the heart. So to get started, let's actually look at the aorta first, which you can see right over here. This is the aorta, where you can see the aortic arch. But on the back, you can actually see that there are three separate branches. So going from right to left, you would have the right, or sorry, the brachiocephalic trunk, the left common carotid artery, and then the left subclavian artery. So it's a little bit disorienting, but let's go back to the front and take a look at those one more time. So the brachiocephalic trunk is actually right over here, and you can see that there are two branches that come off of this. So this actually catches us up to the like left side, where you have now the right common carotid artery, and then the right subclavian artery, which goes out to the arm. Now to follow the blood vessels going up to the head and neck, you can see the common carotid arteries right here and right here. And the common carotid artery in this case is gonna go up and up and up. And then it's going to branch out to two arteries. You can see that there's a branching here. This is where the common carotid artery turns into either internal carotid artery, which goes up to the circular willis and the brain, or the external carotid artery, which goes out to all of these superficial blood vessels. So from the external carotid artery, there will be two branches that we will learn today. One that goes to the face. Luckily, this is called the facial artery. One that goes to the side of the head. This is called the superficial temporal artery. So both of them branch off of the external carotid artery, but as we'll see in the veins, it'll be a little bit different. So let's go ahead and take a look at the veins as well, which is mostly going to be shown best on this side. Now, if you look closely, similar to the facial artery, you have a facial vein, and the facial vein is going to drain into this big vein right here. So this vein is actually a continuation of this one coming from the brain. This is the internal jugular vein. So facial vein drains into internal jugular vein. Now, if you look closely, you have the superficial temporal vein over here. And that vein, although it is connected, is actually going to drain over here to, superficial, or to external jugular vein. Now, a good way to determine this is that the external jugular vein right over here is more lateral. It's smaller, but then it's also draining into this vein right here, next to a certain artery. This is the subclavian vein. Now, if we follow the subclavian vein, you may notice that it's going to join with another vein that we just looked at, the internal jugular vein. So internal jugular vein and subclavian vein join together and that forms brachiocephalic vein. So be careful because you had the brachiocephalic trunk, which was an artery, and you only have one of those, but you actually have a right and a left brachiocephalic vein. So if you look closely though, the left and right brachiocephalic veins join together right here, and that's where they form this large vein going into the right atrium, the superior vena cava. So those are the majority of the blood vessels that go from the head and neck, but you can also see a couple small ones as well. So if you look closely, going to the same place as the internal carotid artery, 
this up here, the one where you can see these two like arteries joining, this is called the basilar artery. And these two arteries are called the vertebral arteries. So the vertebral arteries, you'll be able to see they come off of the subclavian artery. And then yeah, they go up to the brain. Now, if you look closely, you have a vertebral vein as well, which is actually right over here. But you might have probably, or you might have confused that for other veins if you don't know that the vertebral vein drains into the back of the brachiocephalic vein. So that's why knowing the blood flow is so important and so helpful whenever you're trying to figure out what these veins and arteries are. You really want to see which blood vessels are connected and where they go to, where they come from, and then if there's any landmarks that they're next to as well. Because you don't necessarily always need to like, look for them out of the blue. Because if you can see that you have internal jugular vein, you can usually see that you have the common carotid artery right next to it. So once again, internal jugular vein, common carotid artery. Now to look at the thorax, there's a few that are a little bit like different. As you can see, you have these arteries that are gonna be coming off of this other artery. So let's follow that. So coming from the subclavian artery over here, this artery that's going to the front of the thorax, this is called the internal thoracic artery. So the internal thoracic artery will be going down the front right next to the sternum, but if you look closely, there's an artery that branches off of it, or multiple rather. These are called anterior intercostal arteries. Now those will actually connect with other arteries, which is a little bit different from what we usually learn, but you can see that you have these other intercostal arteries that will be branching off of the thoracic aorta back here. And these are called posterior intercostal arteries. So anterior and posterior intercostal arteries generally kind of terminate right around here, but that's as far as we get for that. Now, similarly, although not very like well shown on this model, if you have an internal thoracic artery, you have an internal thoracic vein, and that point where it comes off is a little bit different. It comes off of the brachiocephalic vein in this case. Now there's one vein that we kind of have on the right side, but it's a little bit different on the left. And at the very least, for now, we'll look at this one artery on its own. But if you look closely, this right here is the superior vena cava. And this right here, going to the back of it, is the azygous vein. So the azygous vein collects blood from down here, but also going up into the superior vena cava. And although not shown here, sometimes you'll see that you have inter or sorry, intercostal veins, which are going to be draining into this as well. So you don't always notice this one, but the azygous vein drains into the superior vena cava. So azygous vein, superior vena cava, along with your two brachiocephalic veins as well. So right and left brachiocephalic veins, that also drains into superior vena cava too. So that's about it for today. Good luck with your studying. Thanks for listening, and I'll see you all next time.